Hi beauties, it is officially Spooktober. Happy spooky season. Um, I've been kind of in the mindset most of September. Finally, I'm gonna start posting content. I wish I had done a little bit more October themed stuff in September, but you know, here we are. So I have my spooky tree and I've got my headband, it's freaking bats. I love Halloween. And then today I'm also wearing my <laughs> my haunted house shirt. Let me move my mirror out of the way. My haunted house shirt, yes. Yes, there are bats and a spooky tree in this as well. So because of this, I am gonna do a really simple, well, I say simple, we'll see how simple it turns out to be. I don't know, I don't know what to expect. I'm gonna do some dark makeup today and I don't normally do dark makeup. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna do my lip on camera. I have this really gorgeous nude stick color. It is freckle. And I used that in the Michaels uh, Dollar Tree haul and the video I did coinciding with that as well where I used the Tarte palette. I loved this color and I was like, oh my God, it's like the perfect dark fall shade. So I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna mix just a touch of red from Beauty For Real. This is the shade Really Red. I'm gonna mix a little bit of that just to give it like a little bit of a cherry tone to it as well. And then I just grabbed a bunch of palettes cause I'm thinking because of the shirt and all of that, I'm thinking I'm gonna do like a really dark eye look with just like a pop of orange on the outside. So I did grab my Lorac Neon Lights palette. All right, I've got the orange shade. I'm really probably only gonna use him in this palette, but I wanted him and I, to go with it, to create the kind of dark look I'm thinking, I've got my Lorac Pro, this is the Pro 2, I think. It's got nice, kind of black shade down here, a couple grays that I think we can use to blend. And then I have the Smashbox Double Exposure Palette just because I was worried that the Lorac didn't have quite enough dark shade, so I grabbed that just to be safe. Um, and then really I wanted to use this Stila Vivid Labradite, Labradorite, I don't know. It's like a nice dark shimmery black kind of silvery color. It's one of their liquid eyeshadows and I love these things. I have quite a few colors from the Stila collection. And um, yeah, I haven't used this one yet. So I figured this would be a good time to go ahead and throw him in the mix as well. That's what he looks like. So let's do this. I'm gonna start with my lips and then we'll go into the eyeshadow look. I will say I have not bought a ton of nude stick products. I bought one collector set and I always forget about them. But for lip products, they just make it so easy to go in there and like make this beautiful like matte lip. I love it. I do, I love it. I love the, I watching the video after Nikki edited it, I was like, I really like how that color looks. So that's why I brought it back. I'm into it. I like it. I don't normally do dark lips, you guys know that, but I feel like this this fall, even though we're not gonna be really going anywhere, I feel like this is gonna be the, the fall that I do a lot of dark lips since I'm barely doing makeup anyway. Might as well really make it pop. Dark lips on. I did it on camera today just because I normally don't do it. So I figured, why, what the heck, let's show you guys. All right, so I'm gonna actually start with the orange. I'm gonna do, if you guys watch normally, then you probably know I have like this system in which I normally do my makeup. That I like for testing palettes. Today I'm gonna be kind of adventurous. We're gonna see if it works. But yeah, I'm gonna do my bright shade first, that orange, because I really want the orange to be kind of just like an outer rim type, like a halo glow effect type thing. And then we're gonna do just a, like, I'm thinking really just like heavy black kind of all over my lid. Um, maybe kind of like winged out just a little bit using like a gray blending shade or something like that. Um, and then we'll go in with the Steel Liquid Eyeshadow just right over it. Won't do a cut crease or anything like I normally do because I think having like a black base will make this pop a little bit more. And uh, yeah, if it turns out awful, then I'm not going anywhere. So yeah. That's kind of, that's, let's just do it, you know? Why not, why not do it? So because I was doing my lipstick, I didn't wanna start talking, but I do have a topic for today's video. We watched yesterday, it was called Class Action Park. And it's this documentary that's, that HBO Go just released. It's, is it HBO Go now? Is it HBO Max now? Okay, they changed, I, it, it was like both for a while and then they changed it and I, don't, I can't keep up, but yeah. So we watched it on HBO Max. I saw a commercial for this, this uh, this documentary while I was watching Hulu. And I told Nikki about it, I was like, it seems really interesting and I kind of want to watch it. So we watched it on Sunday. This place was wild. I, I, don't, I don't know how the hell it stayed open as long as it did. So basically it was a water park, kind, kind of. It was like a, we'll call it like an adventure, like a theme park, adventure time type theme park, but it was mainly water-based. It was in New Jersey in the, it was the 80s, right? The late 70s, 80s. It was started by this guy who more or less, more or less was a scammer. He had a lot of like 
investments that were just like not quite legal not quite illegal but like straddling the line you know so this guy he just was always like into something shady and so he I forget, Nikki, how did he end up getting into New Jersey? I know he bought the ski resort, but like, was there a reason he did it? Ah, yeah, he was kicked off of Wall Street because he's shady as fuck, so. Of course, the ski resort is very seasonal. He did a lot to make it as year round as possible. Like he invested in really high quality, like um, snow machines that made it seem like it was legitimately snowing almost year round, but they still had that off season where people just weren't skiing. So in order to over, like to compensate for the fact that obviously this is not a year round investment, he added a water park. It was like any crazy idea that you could possibly come up with, they just made it happen. Like I feel like at no point was an engineer consulted before they built any of this stuff. It was just like, hey, we've got, uh, they they had like an access to a mountain, obviously, because it's a ski resort, so you're on like a mountain edge and you've got like natural water and stuff like that. And he was like, let's just use this to our advantage and not take any safety precautions at all. It was called Action Park but the nickname for it became Class Action Park because of how many people were injured there, how many lawsuits came from it. It just like everything about it was shady as hell. Time out on the story. I have not actually, I bought this Lorac palette a while ago. This is like a something they released a while ago. I kind of forgot about it because I bought a whole bunch at the same time. You guys know I'm really bad about that. I know I did a haul with it on the channel when we first started the channel, but I love this shade. It's very gorgeous. I just really like it applied really easily. It's very bright. I used Atomic, that's what I used. But you got this blue and that's, so I, this is definitely something I need to use, like actually highlight it. Cause I really don't think that I'm gonna use anything else for this look, but I I, re I like what happened here. This is good start. That's some, that's some quality start right there. So I'm gonna jump in now. I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna go in first with the Lorac Pro. Pro and use the black because it's a matte black shade. The double exposure one has just a touch of glitter in it. So I'm gonna start with the matte black, see what we can do with that. And then from there, if I need, I may go into the double exposure. My goal is to not have to touch that one at all and just be able to do it all with the, the two Lorac palettes and then the Stila eyeshadow one, but I don't know, best laid plans. You know, y'all know how it rolls. All right, so back to Class Action Park. This place quickly became like a, it was like a legendary place in New Jersey. They ran ads and stuff, so they got some people from New York to come up there and visit it as well. Really, it was like, I, I, they had, it was very funny. They had like a lot of comedians and stuff who grew up in New Jersey who remember going it, doing commentary throughout. Um, like being interviewed and they would ask him about it and they'd be like, oh yeah, like everybody knew, like you'd come home with injuries and our parents wouldn't want us to go, but like a neighbor kid would invite us. And so then our parents would be like, well, we kind of have to let you go because it's gonna be like a free trip and you're not gonna be in our way. And so it was like, like, everybody knew it was just not safe. Considering how many legal issues they had and how many times it should have been shut down, it was, it lasted for a, a hot minute. I know they had this thing that Nikki kept, kept going like, how the hell? is this okay it was like a luge that's the best way to describe it literally look like a like a like luge in the olympics and you would just like basically like bobsled down this giant hill and they, i mean they i don't were they on like a cart or were they on their bodies or was it was a cart and, but it was like, there are areas of it, they had like these very tight little little sides or whatever. And then there are areas of it, like where you'd hit really hard and people just like flip over the side of it. People would like watch and like hope that somebody was gonna just flip to their death. Like it was really horrible. It was, I don't know. It's, I don't, nothing about it sounds fun to me. I, I mean, I watch it and I was like, how the, how, who the hell would go? But apparently this was like a thing, like this was like a, it was like a rite of passage. Like if you wanted to be like considered a true New Jersey and you had to go. So they had this water slide and it was on the side of a mountain and you would go and it, they were they were like, it just kind of looked like a normal water slide, but you really couldn't see like when you're standing in line for it, you couldn't see like where it was gonna come out. It would go into like just a, a ravine, like just a part, like just some pond water basically. And it, you would drop like 10 feet. You would just come out, you'd shoot out the side of a mountain and then you just fall. And the one comedian he was talking about, he was like, oh yeah, he's like, you came, he goes, I came out and he goes, there was like a good 
10 seconds you're just like, well, this is how I die. Cause you're just kind of free falling and you're like, I'm gonna hit this water and my neck's gonna break and I'm gonna be dead. And my parents are gonna be so pissed cause they told me to be safe. The whole thing too is just everything that was being done was run by teenagers. Like they, they had, legally they had to have people who were 16 working there. But they said that people who were as young as like 14 were manning rides. And so they, the owner, they said he would be there, but like he never was like, like he wasn't like checking on safety precautions or anything. He was just like, you know, do your shit y'all. Okay, off camera, I blended just a little bit more. I did go get um, my powder foundation. This is, there's just black all over my nose. I know you can't see it on camera. I'm gonna go ahead and do the Stila now. I may have to blend out a little bit more just depending on how this lays down and what winds up happening. And I do think I'm actually gonna use Party, which is this really pretty white shade as like, um, a highlight shade and then the inner corner as well. But so they had um, this Tarzan rope and you would swing out into like just an open water source. And they said, you know, everybody's thinking, oh, it's gonna be, you know, really warm water because it's, you know, 90 degrees in the middle of summer. And, but it was coming out, it was fresh water coming off of a mountain. So it was freezing cold. And they said people would like fall into this water and they would just forget how to swim because it was so shocking to the system. They had a wave pool. The wave pool was above people's heads. They, what did they call it? The lagoon of death or something like that? There was a section of it that was like really murky and really deep. And it was murky. Let's let's talk about why it was murky. It was murky because it, would ha it, was, it had fresh water runoff. It, there was uh, human waste because people would use the bathroom in it there was suntan lotion and then they said it was they called it gore because of the injuries that would happen in this wave pool they just like was just gore in there so i was like so you're basically swimming in like the most disgusting cesspool you could possibly could possibly imagine and then you're also at risk of dying i think at first there was a 19 no not a 19 a 15 year old kid who drowned um, and that happened pretty early on, like early 80s. And then a few years later, later, another man drowned. And they talked about, they had one lifeguard stand that was in the deeper section. And what was it that they called it? Seat of death or something like that. Yeah, something like that. And they would, they said literally, they would put people there to like haze them. And in their first hour or so on that stand, they would save like three or four people because of how many people would just immediately start drowning. They'd have people leave the pool area and give them like a chance to clean it out because they were looking for bodies because they were like, just in case we miss something, we wanted to have the ability to go in there and, and check without people swimming, which is horrifying. I mean, that shouldn't be something that you're like, I understand accidents happen and I do. I totally understand freak accidents happen. People die sometimes in amusement parks and it's horrible, but this was just like a common occurrence. Like there was a couple different like kind of like boat race type of rides. And one of them, I can't remember, we can't remember if it was the Colorado Rapids or if it was the, um, they had like a boat, like a, the Colorado Rapids was where you would like pretend a kayak type thing. Then they had one that were like little motor boats. One of them, they used ungrounded electrical fans in the water to propel it. And in a freak accident, well, not that freak, cause it's, I mean, it's ungrounded electricity and open water. So, you know, what do you expect? But in a freak accident, somebody had flipped over in the boats, which was also a pretty common occurrence according to the, the thing. One of the fans short, short circuited and they don't know if he touched it or if it, he was just close enough to it, but he wound up getting electrocuted and dying. And like just the stories that came from this. And, and then of course, you know, cause you're like, well, these people had to get paid out. Like how did it not close? Well, they didn't have real insurance. They had like a fake insurance account that was like an offshore bank account type thing. It just, everything about this, this place was just crazy as hell. It was entertaining in the worst way possible. I, I told Nikki, we, it was in like an hour and a half long. After an hour, I thought it had to be like, I was like, we've been watching this for like two years, right? Because it, it's just, so much happened and so much information and so many bad things were going on. And everybody's just kind of like, I mean, it do be like that, but it, it shouldn't, it really shouldn't. All right, y'all, this is the final look. It's definitely something that is very out of my comfort zone. I don't dislike the way it looks. It's just very dark for me. As funny as funny as it sounds, cause I'm, I am such a dark person like aesthetically and I just gravitate towards that kind of stuff. I just don't love black eyeshadow on myself. That's why I'm trying to push myself, especially during its spooky season to get out there and do it more. I do actually really like the lips though. 
I'm a really big fan of that nude stick color and I feel like the Real Her red mixed really well with it. Also the Stila gray and black, oh gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Um, I'm really glad I picked that up because that was once again, that was one of those like kind of impulse buys. I know it was on sale, but I was just like, uh, I don't, I want a different color than what I have. I'm gonna do a black one. And I'm glad I did because it's gorgeous. It looks really, really good. That's probably my favorite part of the eye look. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed listening to me talk about Action Park. It's sad, but I mean, it's, 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 good, it's an interesting watch. So if you do like us, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. We would love for you to be part of the Dark Angel family. I love Halloween, if you guys can't tell. This year's a little bit crazy just with, you know, 2020 being 2020 and then we're also in the process of moving. So we're gonna do our best to get as much Halloween content out to you guys. And that's why I'm trying to give you guys just some normal Halloween themed looks and we'll do some crazier ones a little bit later, closer to the actual big day. So if you guys are interested in that, like I said, subscribe. Other than that, I hope you guys are all safe, healthy, and you have a wonderful day and stay girly with the dark twist.